All right, so here we're going to look at uh, factoring. And this will be the first part will be review from what we did yesterday, which was factoring by two different methods. The difference of two squares method. And the method of factoring out a greatest common factor. So first, what does it mean to factor at all? Well, the word factor means things being multiplied. And when we, when we do factoring, like as a verb, when we factor something, we're breaking it apart into the pieces that are being multiplied. So like you could almost say that taking 25, you could factor that into five times five. And what we'll do here with difference of two squares in GCF, a lot of times it'll look more complicated than that because we're not just breaking down a 25, we're breaking down like something like two X plus 10 or X squared minus 16. But how can we break these apart into things being multiplied? That's what factoring is. So probably a lot of the time up till now, you've taken the things being multiplied, multiply them together to get here. Now we're basically just going in reverse, breaking it back apart. And there are different reasons that this can be helpful in math that we won't go too much into just yet. That'll hopefully unfold throughout the quarter. So a difference of two squares method, this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, the, the name tells you what it is. You have a difference of two perfect squares. So something squared minus something squared. We can write it like this. And the way this is gonna factor, we're kind of just memorizing a, a formula more or less. This is always gonna become A plus B times A minus B. So you could write this down, but this might be a little bit confusing until we go over some examples and I think it, it'll become pretty easy. I think this is the easiest factory method. So this would be like if we have X squared minus four. So first step, we wanna write it in this format something squared minus something squared, difference of two squares. So x squared, that's just x squared. And four, we can rewrite as two squared. Remember, an exponent tells you how many times you're multiplying this base number. But this is saying take the number two and multiply it two times. That gives us four. And follow the format here. This is going to become the first one plus the second one times the first one minus the second one. It's always plus in one minus in the other. So there we go. Let's say we have y squared minus 25. Let's rewrite that in this format, difference of two squares. So y squared would just be y squared. 25, that's gonna be five squared. How do we come up with that? Because we know it's gonna be squared. And that just means what number times itself gives us this. What number multiplied two times gives us this, that's five. Five multiplied two times gives us 25. And now just like before, it's gonna become y plus five, y minus five. Let's look at another one or two. And so this one, we can rewrite it as x squared minus, what's gonna go here? It's gonna be nine, because nine multiplied two times, nine times nine is 81. And then just like before, this is gonna become x plus nine, x minus nine. If you multiply these two things back together, you'd wind up back here. So again, we're just breaking things apart into the things being multiplied. So if you're, not, if you're not familiar with square roots yet, or like perfect squares, like one times one is one, two times two is four, three times three is nine, you can use a calculator for these. So like if you didn't know that the square root of 81 was nine, that nine times nine is 81, you could do this on a calculator. 
on the graphing calculators we have in class, you'd press the button that says control on it. It's either yellow or blue, depending on which one you get, which calculator. Press control and then press the X squared button. And then you're gonna notice that it puts a square root button on the screen and then just type in whatever number, in this case, 81, then hit enter. And then it would tell you nine. And then you know that nine goes here. So you can write this down if you want to. If you just pull up like the Google calculator, let me pull that up real quick so I can tell you what that would look like. I think it's even more self-explanatory here. Yeah, on the Google calculator, there's just a button that's a square root symbol. So you click that square root button, type in 81, hit enter, it tells you nine. Let's look at one last one together. Let's say we have C squared minus 36. This is C squared minus six squared. And if you notice, whenever we just have a variable squared, it's just gonna be the variable inside. And so this one would be C plus six times C minus six. So let's try practice before we move on. Let's try to here, let's say y squared minus 49. Now let's make, we'll make this one easier to start off. Let's say y squared minus 25, and let's say x squared minus 49. So go ahead and pause the video and try these ones out. Okay, let's have a look together. So first one, we have y squared minus 25. We wanna rewrite that in this format. It's gonna be the same format every time, something squared minus something squared. So what times itself gives you y squared? That's just a y. y times y gives you y squared. x times x gives you x squared. And so it always works out like that. Then for the number, you need to think a little harder. What times itself gives us 25? That's gonna be, five. So again, if you're not sure about that, just do square root 25 on a calculator and it'll tell you five. And then this would become y plus five, y minus five. Next one, we know it's going to be something squared minus something squared. This is just going to be x. And then what times itself gives us 49? If you're not sure, you can figure out what square root of 49 is, and that would tell you seven. This square root symbol just means what number times itself gives you that. So it, it would tell us seven. And now this is gonna become x plus seven times x minus seven. So next factoring method we're gonna look at here is called greatest common factor. Again, the name basically tells you what it is. It's saying what's the greatest factor that the things have in common. So if we have an expression like this, four X plus 10, focus on the numbers. What's the biggest number that goes into four and 10 that can multiply into both of them? Well, let's start by thinking about it. To get four, you could do one times four or two times two. To get 10, you could do one times 10 or two times five. What's the biggest number that both of these share? They both share a one. They also share a two. And two is the biggest number that goes into both of them. So what we're gonna do with this two is we're gonna pull it out of this expression. So we had four X plus 10. Now this is gonna become the same thing, but with two on the outside. And we need to think about what's left on the inside. And for now, we'll just say what it's gonna be and then we'll talk about why. It's gonna be two X plus five. Why is that? 
because two times two X is four X, two times five is 10. So you're basically just saying, what do we have to multiply two by to get four X? What do we have to multiply two by to get 10? Two so X plus five. Let's look at another one. Let's say six X plus nine. So focus on the numbers. Six you can get by doing one times six or two times three. Nine you could do one times nine or three times three. And what's the biggest number they both have in common? A three. So this expression, we're gonna rewrite. Now we're gonna pull out the three because they both have it in common. We can put it on the outside. And three times what is gonna give us six X? Three times what gives us the six? That'd be a two. Three times two is six. And then we need an X there, so you just tack on the X here. And then it's always whatever sign is right here, so it's plus. And then we're saying three times what gives us a nine? That'd be three. So that's our answer. Again, if you were to multiply these things back together, you'd say three times two X, that gives you six X three times three, that gives you nine, there's a plus sign. And then we get back to where we started. But this is where we wanna end right here, breaking it into its factors. Let's do one more. Let's say 15 minus 10X. So again, let's focus on the numbers. 15 you can get by doing one times 15 or three times five. 10 you could do one times 10 or two times five. And here, what's the biggest number they have in common? It's gonna be a five. So we can take the five, put it on the outside and say what's left over. And why can we put it on the outside by the way? Because whatever's out here gets multiplied to everything on the inside. So because both of them have it already, 15 and 10 both have a five, we can take that five and put it out front. Because <clears throat> if you multiply it back together, it goes to both of them. So now we're asking the same question. Five times what would give us 15? That'd be a three. Drop down whatever sign is there. So minus this time. And then five times what gives us 10X? We'll focus on the numbers first. Five times what gives you 10? That'd be a two. And we need the X, so just tack it on. Five times three is 15. Five times negative two X is negative 10 X. So that's where we started, which means we factored it correctly. Let's go ahead and try practice. And then we'll move on to the first part of the classwork. Go ahead and try factoring, let's say, 8x minus 12. Factor out a GCF. Let's go ahead and pause the video. All right, let's have a look at this. So we have eight X minus 12, focus on the numbers. Eight, you can get by doing one times eight or two times four. So basically we're just listing the factors here in this step. 12, you can do one times 12, two times six or three times four. And if you're not sure that you know all the factors for a number, for now, don't worry too much. Just write down all the ones you can think of. Um, if there's no, no numbers they have in common, then uh, try to keep thinking for what else it could be. But otherwise, in the future, we'll talk about uh, a trick you can use um, to make sure that you got the actual biggest number they have in common. Anyways, let's continue with this one. So here, the biggest thing they both have in common is a four. Notice they both have a two, but we're looking for the greatest common factor and four is bigger than two. So we can take out a four like this. And four times what would give us eight X? Well, four times two would give us eight. 
and just tack on the X because we need eight X, drop down whatever sign is here, and then four times what would give us 12? That'd be three, four times three is 12. So this is our factor form of this expression. So at this point, go ahead and work on classwork number 2A, and we'll resume the lecture later.